I also had a friend who, who uh, passed away in an accident involving drinking. I would want to challenge the word motivation, turn it into discipline. A, a bad plan done is better than a good plan not done. If you have a plan, then at least you're going to be motivated. That's when complacency kicks in. Lapses in your goals happen. I, I can have the small glass of wine, which turns into two, or turns into one a day instead of one a week. Um, so I just said, why do it? A brush with professional football, and you were a personal trainer in California. That's you owned, right. You owned your own business? I own my own training business. Yeah, it was a, a warehouse gym. It was all one-on-one -on -one training, very specific programming. I uh, did that for about 10 years. All right, and you are a professional football? I did. So I played through college. Uh, after college, I played uh, a season overseas in Europe uh, for the Milano Rhinos, and then I played, I was with the LA Avengers, which is uh, now defunct, but that was um, back in 2008. You went from professional football player to personal trainer. Yeah, that was a logical transition, <laughs> yeah. you know, working out every day, really understanding like lifting weights and that aspect of it. So it just translated into training people, working in the gym. And then, you know, that just kind of, uh, you know, progressed through through time. My listeners are particularly interested in like lifestyle choices when it comes to alcohol consumption and like fitness routines, alcohol and like performance and recovery with lifestyle and training. Like what is your take on that? Yeah, I think alcohol is a toxin, right? So your body can't perform, uh, you know, at its peak mm -hmm. if you are drinking and especially in excess where you're, you know, getting drunk, getting hungover, your body takes time to recover. So, you know, I think in moderation, if, if you're able to handle it, you know, like that's one discussion. But if you're trying to be completely healthy, you know, having your body perform how it's supposed to perform, I think you have to limit any kind of toxin, alcohol, you know, sugars, you know, processed foods, all that stuff. So what is your thoughts on alcohol and sugars? Do you think they're equally, I mean, obviously not equally as bad, but when it comes to like trying to be fit and healthy, and healthier lifestyle, like they kind of like go hand in hand in the yeah. effects. Uh, I agree with that. I mean, sugar is going to make you lethargic. It's going to break down your muscles. It's going to take you longer to, to recover. You're going to have the insulin spikes, you know, all of that. Uh, alcohol is similar, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's going to, um, it's a depressant. So like, it's going to demotivate you to go work out. It's, it's going to hamper your performance, your cognitive ability to perform the tasks of, of a workout. I think both are, um, things to stay away from. Um, again, unless it's something you can truly put to, you know, a social every couple of months. Like I, I think, you know, it, it should be eliminated if you're trying to live healthy. You mentioned that you're a social drinker, but like you only drink like every four months. Yeah, I would. What is, well, like, what is your like philosophy behind that? I, I personally, I don't like alcohol. I don't like the taste of it. Uh, when I drink, it's usually like a small pour of like scotch or something like that. And it's usually in the setting where I'm either networking for business or I've got friends in town that are, you know, with us and we're having like a big family dinner or something like that, where it's like everyone's kind of enjoying a drink. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's, you know, less than two fingers of, of a glass of scotch and that's it. I could go a year, six months. It just kind of depends on, on the situation. But it, to me, it's not something like I'm going to do in this, unless it's like just the appropriate setting. Being in college football and professional football, what is the background with alcohol when it comes to those things? That's tough because you're, you're getting into, uh, you know, especially with college football, you're getting into a bunch of 20 to 23-year-olds yeah. that aren't always making wise choices. They're a bit younger, so for a period of time, their bodies can um, perform well without being at their peak. Um, for me, I wasn't that talented where I could do both, um, so... I personally have never been a drinker. Um, I just w wasn't raised w around alcohol yeah. and um, kind of noticed, like, hey, if, if I do drink, like, uh, I'm hurting the next day. Like, I'm not performing well. So I, I was never one to, to do that. But as far as as a whole, like, you're you're with a bunch of, you know, young men who are out there, um, you know, doing a little bit more drinking on the weekends and stuff like that. So you didn't grow up with alcohol being, like, the main factor like a lot of us have um, so when it came to like college in high school, was there like peer pressure? Peer pressure. Sure. I never drank in high school. Um, Good. yeah, Good. I Good wanna, job. yeah, people <laughs> probably think I'm weird. Uh, yeah, I never drank in high school. Um, and then when I got into college and, you know, playing college football, 
their the peer pressure got a little bit more, um, and so you know I, I would drink um, occasionally, but it was nothing. It was nothing I was ever like attracted to, uh, so I'm very fortunate with that. And then seeing the results of, um, you know, not being at a peak performance and trying to be an athlete, trying to, trying to take my game to the next level, it wasn't worth it. And then I also had a friend who who uh, passed away in, in an accident um, involving drinking. And so mm-hmm. to me, I'm a very logical thinker. Just none of that was appealing to me. So that that was kind of like the main breaking point of turning you off to alcohol pretty much. It just, yeah, I mean, it was already like wasn't a desire. And then, you know, watching, again, I have had periods of times where I would drink on more, you know, when I was 23, 24 years old mm-hmm. and I was playing football in Europe and, you know, drinking over over in Europe was like you had wine with every meal, and, and part of having family meals is different th- wines for different things. And so, I won't say that I was never like drinking, but um, it was just never appealing, and it was never you know tasted that well, in my opinion. And then just the effects that it could have, both performance and then also like life altering issues that come yeah. with with making those decisions. It was nothing that I was really ever drawn towards. Oh, that's good to know because a lot of us don't have that mindset to where we're not like we're, most of us are drawn to it. Right. And I mean, you're a, a unique person or mindset like you're not you're totally t- almost turned off by it. Sugar, on the other hand, like that's that's a fight <laughs> for me. Um, and so, uh, you know, everyone's got their battles, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but like, if, yeah, if you want to have conversations about baked goods, you know, like that's, that's where I would say, you know, that's where I actively have to like not have them in my house and, and, and things like that. But alcohol, um, was more obvious and and my dad was a police officer. So I think part of growing up was him always pointing out, you know, Hey, this is what I dealt with today because of this. And, um, just, you know, that was never something that was, you know, looked like something I wanted to go do. Yeah. Oh, well, and you grew up in California. So yes. your dad was a cop in California? Yes. Oh, so you probably had some, like, lovely stories <laughs> that he would tell. <laughs> your personal training co- career, um, you went from professional football into personal training. What – and then you – did you go into owning your own business right away? Uh, so I went from football to working for a gym. Okay. And, again, it was just the logical transition of, like, hey, I knew how to work out. Yep. Um so when I got in the training, I, I worked for uh, a big gym called uh, Equinox out in, in Orange County, California, and had real, real great clientele. Um, one of the best things there was tons of education to improve my training. So I got in the training, and it was let's lift heavy for if we're trying to get strong, and let's work really hard if we're trying to lose weight. And it became more hey, like let's be systematic about this, putting programs together, adding in like true understanding of nutrition and how the body works. Um, what type of clientele did you have? Yeah. All of them? Uh, yeah, I did. So, uh, you know, I, I had certifications in like corrective exercise, po- postural um, training, uh, pelvic floor training, um, you know, just the normal, um, you know, personal training certifications as mm-hmm. well. Uh, so I had clients from athletes who were, you know, in high school training uh, to, you know, post-surgery, you know, trying to regain full function and, and mobility in their body and to overweight clients. So I, I had a whole a whole gamut of all of that. You said you put programs together? Yes. Yeah. So everything was, was data, you know, and just about any business, data is key. So mm-hmm. we were tracking, you know, what we were doing for the workout. We were tracking what we were putting in our body. We were tracking, you know, hydration levels. Uh, we are you know, weight body composition, we were tracking all that so that we can give honest feedback to the client. You know, if they're spending money coming to me for results and maybe they look in the mirror and they don't see exactly what they wanted to see, but they can see that they've lost, you know, 7% of their body fat and they can see, you know, hey, look at look at your shoulders, look at your posture, like all this is improved. That showed them value the more than like just like how non-scale I Non-scale victory. When people come to you with like substance or alcohol and they're like, I want to lose weight, but how do I navigate this? Like what, I mean, I know what I used to tell my clients, but what, what did you used to like, how did you navigate that? For me, I wanted to present myself as a, almost like a business partner with them or a teammate. So I was all about accountability. And so I would challenge them and I would build up a relationship that I could 
push those buttons and not make them feel like I was picking on them. So I would challenge them like, Hey, let's go a month and you tell me how you feel. And if I'm wrong, then like, you know, like then I'm wrong and you can go back to drinking and adding all these things to your body. But, um, you know, the proof is in the pudding. So if we can get them to a point where we're tracking what they're eating, they're being very upfront and honest about what they're, what they're drinking. And then we can really do it. Hey, how are you sleeping? How are you, how's your body feeling? Like, are you feeling achy when you wake up? Are you, you know, are your joints hurting? Um, you know, for both nutrition and, and, and drinking, um, you know, the proof is, is right there. Like, how do you feel? Did you have any success stories with people, you challenging them to that and then them quitting? Yeah. I, uh, I would say one of my favorite clients that he was a client of mine for 10 years. Uh, he came in, he was a workaholic. He was like 26. He owned his own company. He was working like 16 hours a day. He was 255 pounds when he should have been 185 pounds. Um, and a lot of that was just a lack of understanding of nutrition, sleep, uh, drinking and all, all of that, but he was really good at working. And so we were just like, Hey, let's take that same motivation that you have for work. Mm -hmm. Um, he had a major health scare, uh, and where the doctor basically said, you like, you need to change your lifestyle if you want to be able to, um, you know, con continue to, to live. And so we quit, he, we got him to quit drinking. We got him to completely revamp his eating when he's eating, how much he's eating, you know, what he's eating. And I mean, the change in, in less than eight months was like, he, he dropped down to like 205 pounds. He, uh, he felt great. He, he looked alive. Like his face didn't look, you know, caved in and, and, and tired and worn out. And I mean, and that was why I was able to keep him for 10 years. Cause after we got the weight loss down, he was still, Hey, let's keep going. This yeah. feels good. I feel like the having a trainer keeps you accountable and what are your thoughts on training like with a trainer for once a week or what did you used to recommend to people for like a workout routine? You know, if, you, if you're going to ask me like, Hey, how am I going to get the best results? It's gotta be, you know, three, four or five times a week. All my clients that are in with consistency. Um, and some of them was like, Hey, let's do this for six months. And then like, let's train twice a week and I can give you a program to do on your own because there was that trust factor. Like, mm -hmm. I know you're going to go take care of business. Most people, I mean, that's why boxers, like they're great at boxing, but they still have trainers because they need somebody to, uh, uh, an extra set of eyes to watch what they're doing. They need somebody to push them. Um, and so I, I was always encouraging, like, let's get in as many times as we can so I can keep you accountable. My thoughts are I always tell people at least three times a week to start out or you're not going to get results because how are you going to keep yourself accountable? And, and we put it out on the calendar. Like, hey, if you're twice a week in a month, that's only eight days that you've, you've done this, right? Like three times a week, it sounds really, it sounds like a lot because that's three a week, but that's 12 times in a month or, you know, mm -hmm. more or less. So yeah, you've got to be in there. And you've Unless got you know they're coming in without you. Right. But those that don't come in or do anything without you, you're like, what is the point of this? <laughs> like you're not getting any results because you're only working out with me once or twice a week. And I mean, it's hard. And that's the great thing about setting really good expectations is like if someone's telling me they want to come in once or twice a week, I'm going to say almost you're wasting your money because you're not going to get the results you want. Like, OK, I can help point things out and, you know, give you things to do at home. But if, if you don't have consistency, you don't have a base, mm -hmm. like it's almost not worth it. I mean, something is better than nothing, but like if you're looking at dollars and cents, like come in more often, you're going to get results that you want. Like you said consistency. So that is like a huge thing in this community right now is consistency. So when you're wanting to lose weight, you have to be consistent. <clears throat> when you want to quit drinking, you have to stay consistent. What is your take on staying consistent? Not looking at too big of a picture. I mean, obviously you have your big goal. Mm -hmm. Um but you need to look at the day to day. You want to win that day mm -hmm. is what I would say. Um, like how do you eat an elephant, right? One bite at a time. Like if you, if you look at the whole elephant, that's, that's a huge thing you're trying to accomplish. But if you look at one day at a time, did I get my workout in, you know, did I stay consistent on my eating and not having a drink? Then you won that day. And now we're going on to the next day. Um, mm -hmm. so I think, I think that's the biggest thing is just don't focus on like, Oh, this is too hard. Or, you know, how am I going to do this for three months? Whatever the, the goal is like, just focus on that day, win that day, you know, you've got your accountability buddies, like use them to, yeah. to help you help you win the day. Yeah, Accountability is key, almost to staying consistent. What's the biggest piece of advice for somebody trying to get healthy, whether that like they want to quit drinking or they just need to lose weight or just overall? Let your goals be known, whether it's with your trainer or a loved one, like let that be out there and then start today. What um, if they come back and they're like, well, my loved one doesn't support me? 
I mean that that's <laughs> that that's uh, that's I think uh, a deeper dive in the a counseling session. <laughs> um, <laughs> then find your trainer or you know a you know a community a church some, something where like you're around people who want you to succeed. Um, write it down. I mean that's something I, my wife and I are very good at. Is we we write down our goals mm-hmm. whether it's business with our kids uh, with our health and fitness as we we still are you know on that path. Um, is writing it down and then doing it. Yes, doing it. Yeah. I say that all the time. Don't just do it. Don't think, just do. That's one of the things I used to always say in coaching and, and training. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a good one. It's true. So, why do you not train anymore? It's a great question. I did it for over 10 years, owned my business for 10 years. Um, I was. A lot of my clients in the morning were business owners and CEOs, so I was up at 3.30, 4 in the morning for mm-hmm. 10 years, getting into the gym by 4.30, 5 o'clock. Uh, I was coaching football at the time, and so I was getting home at 7, 8 o'clock at night. I had my first child, and I realized this isn't as fun, leaving before he gets up and getting home after he went to bed. And then my wife and I also had made the decision to leave California, move to Idaho. Um, so I kind of didn't really want to start a new gym. I had the entrepreneur bug. And, um, so that's how I, you know, started a different business when I came out here, um, other than training, but it's still a major part of my day and, and my life is still, you know, maybe I'm not training other people, but I, I'm still very focused on health and fitness. So going from personal trainer to mortgage lending, like what, how does, like, how do they connect? Yeah. The principles are the same, right? Uh, consistency, you know, doing my task daily that is going to make me successful as a mortgage uh, business as it was as a trainer or, or helping somebody get fit. Um, you know, so um, reaching out to clients, you know, making them feel valued, uh, making sure I'm reach- helping them reach their goals. Mm-hmm. That That's all, you know, it's a different industry, a different impact, but it's all the same. Um, consistency of staying on the phones, emailing, you know, like calling people and seeing if they need anything. It's all it's all the same. Uh, it just looks different. And then your career, well, just like real estate, like it's revolved around happy hour almost. How do you navigate that? <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, we've done like happy hour events together. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, if you notice, I, I'm not normally drinking yeah. at those because for me, like I never want to be in a, in a situation where um, I'm not beyond reproach. So, um, you know, if I'm at one, of, if I'm at a social and it's, you know, a bunch of real estate agents that I'm talking with, you know, again, I might have a glass of scotch, uh, but typically you'll see I'm drinking water. Like it's, it, it's just, and to me, it's not a big deal because it's never been an important part of my life to, to have a drink. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I guess I'm lucky. I don't typically like the taste of it, um, that it's not a big deal for me. So I'm able to go to those events without worrying about like if I'm going to drink too much or something like that. Yeah. Cause you want to remember all, you want to retain as much information from those events as right. you know, you possibly can. You're going there for business. Right. And some of us might get a little taken, right. like carried away. From your personal experience, how does alcohol affect somebody's workout? I would say the two biggest things. One is it, it's a demotivator. So if you drank the night before, you're not feeling like you want to go move around, even though it's probably the best thing your body needs. Um, and then two, like if you do work out, uh, cognitively, um, the way your body moves is impaired. Even if mm-hmm. you're not drunk or hungover, like you're still feeling the effects of it in your system. And so, you know, you can usually tell like, Hey, if we're doing a box jump and and they're having a hard time when normally they can get up there, no problem. That's probably why. Oh, I never thought about that. Maybe I should try box jumps again and see if I can do them better. (laughs) The term, if it fits in your macros, like what is, um, because people are like, well, the wine fits in my macros. (laughs) Like (laughs) what's your take on that? I mean, and I did a nutrition class once where they're like, oh, think of it like school. Like if you're eating right 90% of the time, you're getting an A. Um, I think people try to find a reason to to compromise on their goal. Oh, yeah. like if it, it fits in this or, um, you know, like I think I think that's just like an excuse mm-hmm. to, to want to allow that. And that's when complacency kicks in and that's when uh, – you know, lapses in your goals happen is because, hey, I, I, I can have the small glass of wine, which turns into two or turns into one a day instead of one a week. Yeah. Um, so I just say, like, why do it? Exactly. What are your thoughts about mental health when it comes to fitness? Because fitness is supposed to boost our mental health. But then if you're still drinking and like you're still getting that depressant. Working out, like we used to have a 
a, a saying that movement is the medicine, whether your body's achy or it's not feeling right, or you're sitting at a desk all day, like movement is the medicine. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's going to help you feel better. Your body's going to release endorphins. You're going to feel confident about yourself because you're moving, sweating. All of that is, um, going to make you feel better. It's going to brighten your mood. Um, it's going to make you stronger, carry yourself better. And, and drinking just does the opposite of that. Um, it's going to pull you back down. It's just all things we've been talking about, right? You're yeah. not going to feel as good. Um, you're, it's, it's a, it changes, you know, your mind, um, especially in the moment when you're doing it, like you're, you're not thinking clearly. Um, so it, there's, there's a reason why that's going to lead to more and more problems. Like you can't outwork out the alcohol. Right. I mean, we can, I mean, I used to try, <laughs> like, let me do this really hard workout to try to like, uh, sweat out the alcohol. Doesn't yeah, people or, or dessert, right? Like, well, I worked out really hard today. I can have this to like, like it's just, you're just creating excuses yeah. to do the things you said you don't want to do. So it's finding an excuse. So you have to stop finding the excuses like to get anywhere in life pretty much. Right. But what is your view on alcohol and the damaging effects the carcinogens can have on the body, especially if starting a workout program? I think it, it comes down to like, it's going to make your body feel like you don't want to move. It's going to make you feel like I can't do this because I don't feel good. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it's because you put a toxin into your body. So I would say just do the workout. I mean, if you're going to do a 30 minute workout instead of an hour workout and that's your first workout, then do it. Um, and then don't let yourself slide on drinking the alcohol the next day so that you can, you know, do a longer workout because something's better than nothing. So even if you just, moving around, you got a good stretch, you know, you got the blood flowing and you're sweating, that's mm -hmm. going to sweat out those, you know, toxins. And then the next day you can do better. Yes, I agree. What is the best way to start a steady workout program and staying motivated? So I would say the word motivation is, is tricky because motivation is fleeting, right? Like mm -hmm. you watch a video on working out or, or something like that, you're going to feel motivated in that moment. So I think I would want to challenge the word motivation, and turn it into discipline. Ooh, yes. Um, so, because you're not, you know, you're, there's a lot of days now I don't feel motivated to go work out, but the discipline that I'm going to do this is that's where it kicks in when motivation is, is gone. Um, so I would focus on like, let's build a foundation of discipline, even if it's starting with, Hey, I watched a motivational video or mm -hmm. I read this thing, or I saw this person, um, you know, that could be the motivation that got you started. But then you got to put in, you know, discipline to kick in when you're not feeling motivated. So I love the word discipline because like people like me and you, like we've already been through the, you know, we are disciplined to work out and <clears throat> eat as healthy as we can most of the time. Mm -hmm. And like a lot of people don't know how to get there, I guess. But yeah, like that motivation should just be discipline. And that's why you can hire a trainer, right? That right. That can be... You know, I, I had plenty of clients where maybe, you know, I had clients that I literally trained for 10 years, for five years. I had some that it was, you know, eight months to a year where it was like help them get back on track, help them, you know, find that discipline mm -hmm. and have a program. And that's another thing to help with motivation and discipline is if like you have something written down, I'm going to do these 10 workouts, you know, these 10 exercises. That makes it a lot easier than going into it without a plan. Um, you know, a, what is the saying? A, a bad plan done is better than a good plan not done. So like if you have a plan then at least you're going to be motivated to, yeah. you know, like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to just go get it done. What is your current uh, workout routine? Nowadays, I do jujitsu three times a week. Um, and then I do, the, I'm in the weight room. I have a, a nice setup in my house. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm in the weight room three to four days on top of that. So I do everything from the assault bike mixed in with, um, you know, Olympic lifts, deadlifts. Um, I'm really big on corrective exercises because I now sit behind a desk instead of, you know, being on my feet all day. Um, so I, I, I keep that routine. Um, you know, of resistance training, but then I, I supplement jujitsu um, as well, which is I've kind of fallen in love with. Yeah. Do your kids do it too? My oldest son uh, is five, almost six, and he's been doing it for about eight months. And uh, so we just sit in the living room and arm bar each other, you know, oh. to practice. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> That's super fun. Have you ever done fasting? I have not done fasting. No, I, uh, I know intermittent fasting and all that is, is kind of a buzzword right now. Um, I don't know enough about it to have a hard stance. I would say I'm always careful with spiking insulin levels and, and things like that. Uh, I was always under um, the philosophy of like being consistent, eating healthy, eliminating the processed foods, 
um, things like that. I, from what I hear from people who do it and who are very knowledgeable about it is it's, it's a good thing to do for a certain amount of time because you're going to re- reset some of those um, the things that you're working on. But I, as, as far as long term or something I've done. So you've never done like a 24, 36 hour fast I intentionally? <laughs> oh, OK. That's good. Um, so you it's more you kind of have the same mindset I do with like it's just ba- about balance. Right. Like, ba- like you don't need to starve yourself or, you know, do anything drastic. It's just about balance. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather you eat real food, you know, eat three to five small, you know, moderate meals, um, mm-hmm. you know, that are it's real food. You're eating, you're eating your meat, your vegetables, your fruit, um, less processed food. So you don't have to do the big drastic things. Again, there's, there's the reasons that why people do mm-hmm. things for a short period of time. So I'm not going to disagree with it, but yeah. it's just not something I found that I wanted to I wanted to do um, your take on the carnivore diet. I am a very big believer of the animal based diet, which was stemmed off of the carnivore diet um, where you're mostly eating meat. So uh, my personal diet is probably about 90% red meat and I eat tons of fruit. Um, I, I'll, I'll do more of a pro metabolic. So I'll eat root vegetables, carrots, um, potatoes, uh, squash, which might be a fruit, I think. But um, I don't eat a lot of broccoli and, and some of those uh, other vegetables. So strictly meat, uh, uh, carnivore diet, I think you need a little bit more balance. But I think you can get most of the thing, the nutrients you need from you know red meat, things like that, um, that I would say probably add fruit, probably add other things. Um, so – Red meat. So there's this other controversy between white meat, red meat, fish. Like, why red meat? So, um, you know, I'm not I'm not a doctor. Yeah. So yeah. I want to be careful. What, yeah. What what I say here, but red meat is super nutrient dense, um, and I think you should be eating more than just you know a steak and, and hamburger. I think you should be adding in liver and some of the organs and things like that, which. I'm not great at, right? Like it's not the best tasting things and something as a culture, we've become accustomed to not eating that. Um, but you're going to find most of the nutrients that you need in red meat. Um, you know, chickens, uh, I, I do eat chicken and, 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 and white meat and stuff like that, but you're going to find more, more dense nutritional value in, in red meat. Yeah. Cause I mean, we'll watch things on YouTube and some people are like, definitely add hamburger and steak to your diet. And then some people are like, absolutely no red meat. There is <laughs> like, a very long time where I, I was eating chicken for almost every, every meal trying to get really lean and, and it can. Um, but I always felt, you know, I always felt like I was lacking in something. Um, and you know, now that I, I, I more mostly focus on red meat, um, I don't have those same lethargic, you know, kind oh. of like, um, lows, uh, that I did when I was only, eating, when I wasn't eating a lot of red meat. So somebody comes to you and they want a nutrition plan, but all, all these like fad diets are out there, keto, carnivore, like, Mm -hmm. you know, you name it, but is your mindset just trying to focus them on like balance? Yeah, I would say research is key, but watch out for the fad, the fad diets. I've, I've never been somebody who's told someone like, oh, that's a good idea. Um, I, I just think balance is like, you know, get fruit. Fruit's going to offer you so many things that, you know, carbs and, and things, yeah. the sugars that your body does need. You know, meat is going to offer you the protein uh, and other, you know, amino acids and, and nutrients that your body needs. Um, you know, I, I think having all of that in there is, is important. So when people come to, when, when they would come to me and say, I gained 30 pounds after I quit the keto diet. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm like, I just cringe. Like I wear my, you know, people can, di- I'm very facial. So they're like, you don't like that diet. And I was like, I do not. <laughs> like, I think that if you do it right, yes. But a lot of people that I know have not personally done keto diet correctly. And I know that there's like pros and cons to every diet, right. but at the same time, like after I read through what the actual keto diet was, I was like, okay, maybe I can get on board with this. But for just, you know, Jane Doe off the road, like they don't know what keto diet is. And when you look at all the products that have come out, so the fad diet comes out, the keto, and then all of a sudden they have all these, oh, it's keto, it's like, I can it's, eat it's it. keto friendly. Yeah. Like it's because your body knows you're missing something, um, in my opinion. And so, um, 
And that's why I like the Atkins diet where nobody ate carbs and they lose 20 pounds and they gain it all back as soon as they had a piece of bread. Like it's, it's because your body was lacking and then you fed it and your body just like absorbed it all. So I would say balance and consistency. Um, you know, I, I had people who didn't eat a lot and, and would do the fasting, um, you know, not very wisely. And then I would tell them, hey, you need to eat. And they'd gain three or four pounds and they'd freak out. And then three or four weeks later when their body realizes like, hey, I'm, I don't need to store this as fat because my body's going to use it all. Yeah. All of a sudden that's when you start to see the weight going back down. So that brings, that's another good question because <clears throat> a lot of people are like, well, I only eat 12 to 1500 calories. I'm like, you need more calories. Mm-hmm. That is for a child. Yeah. <laughs> and like I tell people when, after I had my first child, I lost probably 20 to 30 pounds in a few, in like a couple months when I started actually eating more. Right. I think it was like 1900 to 21 calories. And I was just running. I wasn't doing anything crazy. But how do you get that into people's heads? Like you need to eat more. But I mean, obviously healthy. Mm-hmm. Like that's such a hard thing to navigate and get in people's heads because so many people are stuck on a 1200 calorie diet. You got to break down like what it takes for your body to thrive um, and understanding your body needs this much protein. Your body needs this many carbs. I mean, because people you know, hated carbs for a while. And you gotta but they realize, don't know what carbs are. Yeah, you got to realize like I'm not just talking about carbs from a piece of white bread like I'm talking about the vegetables and the food that you're eating um so I think it's I think it's important you know when I was playing college football I was eating 44 5,000 4,400 5,000 calories a day now I'm you know probably around you know 2,500 to 3,000 um but your body uses the stuff you put into it as fuel Mm -hmm. and what you put into it your body can start to realize what it needs so if you have been starving yourself when you eat, your body's going to think, Hey, I've been starving. I better store all all this as, you know, fat and and waste. But once your body realizes, Hey, I'm going to be fed properly and I can run efficiently. Then that's when you're, you're, you'll still be able to start losing weight, even though you're eating more. Yeah. I, that is like the one thing that drives me crazy. And I mean, I mean, Jonathan does the same thing. Like he's like, well, I didn't eat that much. I should be losing weight. I'm like, you need to eat more. Like you have a body that you know, needs probably at least 2,500 calories a day. Correct. And then when he actually would start eating more, he started losing weight. Yep. Because it's what you're eating. Yeah. You know, yeah, you can eat 2,600 calories of donuts and processed food, and, and that's going to store and sit in your body differently than if you're eating real food. Yeah. And you're working out, and your body's using that as energy. Um, that's, there's a big difference in that. And just, like, empty calories. Right. Like, the alcohol and, like, all the sugary coffees. Right. And um, speaking of coffee, do you... Do you do you drink coffee? I will have a cup of coffee every every morning, but I'm not one of those people who have multiple cups. Uh, I don't put creamers or, or anything in it. Um, I never drank coffee until I met my wife. Really? And, yeah, and it was something she did, and so like I kind of got into it. Um, so I also don't ever want to have an addiction to caffeine where I'm having headaches if I don't have enough coffee. So yeah, I, I keep it in moderation um, with one cup a day. Wow, you're very disciplined. I, I try to I try to stay on the path. Yeah. Um, a lot of people in my group are like, well, now that I've navigated quitting alcohol, I want to quit coffee. And to me, I'm just like, oh, uh, like, can I just quit one thing for a year and then like try to figure out letting go of coffee? Because I mean, I. Yeah, I would just <laughs> I would dig into the why, you know, like, are you loading it full of like the processed you oh, yeah, know, creamers and sugars? And, and then, you know, maybe you do need to. Uh, you know, take that down. Um, but I, I would say, yeah, you know, you don't have to quit coffee, um, but maybe do it less and maybe drink it with less junk in it. So when I was calculating my macros after Emma, like I said, to lose weight, I would drink black coffee and like when I would get hungry and it like curved my appetite. Okay. And that's when I started this whole black coffee kick. Once in a while, I'll put like milk or half and half, whatever. And then, I mean, like maybe once a month, I'll get like a sugary coffee. But, <laughs> um, Black coffee curbing the appetite. I mean, I'll put honey, like natural, mm-hmm. like raw honey, um, yeah. or, or maybe some whole milk or something like that in there too. Yeah. Uh, I just, you know, it was my credit to my wife. Like I, I originally learned to drink coffee with coffee mate creamer, you know, <laughs> creamer, and uh, she was the one because she also has a similar background in mm-hmm. fitness and stuff. She was the ones like you're, you're drinking poison, and um, you know, and when you read the ingredients and you see all the words on that you can't pronounce is you know it's all fake i was like you're right and so um you know coffee with a little bit of honey and maybe some whole milk like in moderation Mm -hmm. you know it's i I think it tastes good and it does help get me going in the morning so we never buy coffee creamer ever 
I recently started buying half and half, but only because I got sick of going and buying a $7 coffee. What health supplements and powdered health drink mixes would you recommend or do you take any? Man, back in the day, I've tried everything. Um, every kind of protein power, powder, weight gainer. Um, I take heart and soil, I think it's called, um, like beef organ, um, you know, heart, you know, supplements that are it's like grounded up, like, you know, beef organs and oh. heart and liver and other stuff like that. Cause I know I don't eat enough of those cause they're not my favorite tasting. Uh, so I still do that now, but it's a powder, uh, it's a, a capsule. Pill. Okay. Yeah. Um, those, so those are what I take now. Uh, I think, you you know, you can probably look them up on Instagram and you, you they've got, you know, a ton of information on it. Uh, but it just goes into more of what I'm eating. Like I'm eating real foods and now I'm taking like, you know, a real You're supplement. supplementing. Yeah. Um, as far as protein powders, um, I mean, even those are just chalked with things that you don't need. Um, and what is, what's your goal? Like eat a piece of, eat a piece of a steak. Like you're going to get way better protein out of it. Um, if you're going to, you know, if you're an athlete and you're trying to put on weight and you're trying to do a little bit more, there are decent, decent ones out there, um, that aren't, you know, poisoned with as much sugar. I know like, um, monk fruit is becoming, yeah. you know, more and more popular. And I know there's some pr good proteins out there with that. Um, but I've used them all, done them all in my playing days and, and, you know, trying to get as big and as strong as I can days. But I realized like that you're still putting in processed stuff. Um, so I, I personally don't use, uh, protein powder and stuff anymore. Oh, good to know. Uh, do you do anything for like greens or anything? I don't, not for greens. I, I've done green supplements in the past. I don't have anything wrong with them. I just choose, you know, those can add up cost wise. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather just go buy the food that I need um, and do it that way. So have you ever recommended any like supplements to your clients back in the day? Yeah. Uh, you know, fish oil, like, okay. so the, a lot of that stuff's in those pills that I'm taking, you know, the supplements I'm taking now, but uh, you know, s fish oils, your omegas are, are super important, mm -hmm. a daily multivitamin. But again, the reason why we're taking those is usually because they're lacking. We're not getting what we need in our diet, which are our micro nutrients. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, a good, healthy multivitamin is not going to be bad for you. I'm not saying you shouldn't use these things. I, this, I've gotten to a point where I'd rather spend my money on, on other things. Um, so fish oil is a big one that I, I always recommended a, a multivitamin, you know, finding the right one is another good one that I would suggest. So instead of going to Amazon and shopping all the supplements, just like a basic multivitamin and right. like an omega. Right. Oh, that's good to know. So very popular discussion. Um, what is your opinion on 75 hard? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The best thing about 75 and hard, uh, cause I've had a ton of friends do it. And one of the things as an outsider who hasn't hasn't done that, uh, that I really enjoyed is the discipline that it creates. Yeah. Because you're tracking. I mean, it's the ultimate accountability thing, right? Because I don't I don't know all the rules, but I know you have to like take pictures, you have to post, you have to do all these things. Um, you're doing multiple workouts. Um, so I think the one of the biggest things that I like about it, as somebody who hasn't personally done it, is like I've seen people. I actually have a friend who was drinking every night who was, you know, doing, you know, eating out and doing all those things. And he hit 75 and hard, hard, did a great job. Um, wasn't somebody that needed to lose a lot of weight, but just needed to clean up his health. And, uh, he hasn't drinking, had, hasn't, he doesn't drink anymore. And it's been, you know, probably a year he's done the 75 and hard a few times, you know, in those, in those times. And it's awesome because he, he carries over the, Hey, I'm, I'm going to go, go for a run. Hey, I'm gonna go do something inside. Yeah. Um, so do I think it's the end all be all, workout, like there's so many right things to do. There's no, I don't think there's one right way to do things, but I think the biggest uh, thing I've been impressed with is it does create discipline. It does create like that motivation we were talking about earlier. Like, Hey, I, I have to, otherwise I have to start over, right? Like I yeah. have to do this for 75 days. So I think that's, I think that's important. Mental toughness goes along with discipline. Yep. I mean, we started it and haven't drank since we started it. There you go. I mean, another success story. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And I mean, I think you've asked me many times about it and I know I interviewed another trainer and she was like, no, I have never done it. But I mean, I know people that have done it. I mean, cause I'm somebody who works out most days of the week anyways. And so I've never felt a need like, Oh, I had to put myself on, on that strict of, yeah. of like, Hey, I, I need that. But like for my friend who did it, like he wasn't working out regularly. He was sitting behind his desk at work. He was drinking every single night, like not heavily drinking, but having drinks every single yeah. night. 
and he he knew he needed he needed a, a change and for him it was awesome yeah it um definitely is changing then com- being a personal trainer and yeah being consistent with working out and stuff and then having to do that second workout like it's mandatory right oh i was it like made me cringe sometimes <laughs> <laughs> so with that like i learned i used to not really be a huge believer in like walking for like weight loss or okay. whatever cuz it's just boring to me right. but then through 75 hard we started walking as our second workout because you know, we have kids like what are you going to do yeah and I've stopped like doing a ton of like hit mm-hmm. and actually focusing more on compound exercises like weight and weight lift. Well, yeah, compound right. exercises and walking more than like trying to kill myself in the gym. Um, what like what are your thoughts on people adding walking into their routine? Yeah, I think if you would ask me 15 years ago, I would say walking. That's not a workout, right? right? <laughs> but um, it's called steady state cardio, right? And it's actually like when you get behind the science of your body's hormone levels and stress levels, like if you take somebody who's got a high stress job or a new mom, who's just got crying babies all the time, like their, their stress is already super high, right? Their nervous, their nervous system is always on edge Mm -hmm. uh, where instead of doing a hit where you're basically keeping yourself in that elevated um, fight or flight, go walk on an incline on the treadmill at, you know, a low speed where you're barely hanging on, but it's just a walk and you're going to just sweat. Yeah. Um, going outside for a walk and just being outside in nature, like, um, you know, is that the only thing you should be doing? Uh, no, but, um, you know, there's people who are, um, clients that I had that were very overweight coming from a very sedentary lifestyle where they're sitting and working and eating, you know, just fast food at his office where, hey, I'm not going to, we're not going to go do an, the assault bike. Um, we're going to go walk on the treadmill for 30 minutes. And, you know, they're just drenched in, sh- in sweat at the end of it. And it's yeah. like, well, your body just, you know, is, is resetting itself. So I think steady state cardio, um, like everything, you need to mix things and reprogram and stuff. But I think steady state cardio walking is, is super important and very beneficial. Yeah. I and mean, I, that was one, one of the things that I took from 75 hard. It's like, wow. I can actually walk and not like right. do a million box jumps and burpees and oh my gosh, like I hardly do burpees anymore. <laughs> because, I mean, I like you can ask all my past clients, they're like, gosh, Megan killed me every single time. And it's like, well, because like I was in that mind frame, like yep. well, you don't walking stupid. But I mean, now I know that it's exactly very beneficial. And there's that's where programming comes into the play. Like for six weeks, you should start switching things up. You know, walk, your walk should be different. Your exercises should be different because your body gets used to that workout and then it becomes less beneficial. But if you're constantly throwing new adaptations at it, your body's got to respond. Yeah. Um, and that's when you're going to see the biggest results. Overall with <clears throat> weight loss, letting go of alcohol, your key takeaway, like, what would be the main thing? Like you've mentioned support, consistency. Mm -hmm. I mean, just wrapping it all together. Yeah. Find your support system. Um, If it's a trainer, if that's something you can afford to do, like there's extreme value, especially in good trainers that are going to, you know, reach out to you, not just in the hour session, but reach out to you, see how your weekend was, you know, hey, are you staying, uh, you know, turn in your homework, you know, let's talk about what you ate, what you, you know, here's, you know, you're working out with me three times a week. Here's, here's a program to do on your own. Um, That's huge. And then just, writing down your goals, staying true to the goals, you know, having somebody, if it's not a trainer, just somebody that can help keep you accountable, mm-hmm. a friend, a loved one, you know, a spouse, somebody that you can just kind of like, Hey, like I gotta go do my workout. Or if you forget to do your workout, like, Hey, don't, don't you need to go get your workout in? Just somebody that, to keep you disciplined when, when the motivation is, is not there. Support is huge when it comes to any of it, because you have, I mean, to me, I have to have accountability. I have friends that, um, like when it's nice out, we'll go walking or whatever. And then we keep each other accountable. And then my YouTube group keeps me accountable for not drinking. <laughs> and it's just like, you have to find that de- You definitely have to find that support group. Absolutely. And, you know, it keeps you accountable, keeps you consistent. And I love how you mentioned writing down things because some people do and some people don't, but I think that's a huge, huge key to any success as well. 